What is the first thing that comes to mind when we mention Paris? For most people, it will be fashion, and quite rightly so. From The Devil Wears Prada to Emily in Paris, our pop culture is clearly obsessed with French fashion. Let's face it, at some point, we all have tried to create a chic French look. We all look forward to donning ourselves in iconic French fashion brands like Chanel and YSL. But what exactly made France the fashion capital that it is today? In this video, we take a look at the rise of France as a fashion flag bearer, the historical figures and events that were part of this journey. Our story begins in the 17th century during the reign of Louis XIV. The Sun King, as he is called, wanted the dress code at court to reflect their power and sophistication. He built the Palace of Versailles as a symbol of French culture and power, so it is not surprising that he wanted the dress code at his court to also reflect that. Have you watched power dressing tutorials on Instagram? Well, the French king had cracked power dressing 400 years ago. People who visited the palace were in awe of the royal fashion and that fueled their interest in the art of dressing. Consequently, the interest in fashion trickled down to the streets. His finance minister, Jean-Baptiste Colbert, saw enormous economic potential in fashion. Hence, they protected the local textile industry from foreign fashion while also funding its own development. Colbert's vision for French fashion was ambitious. He is reported to have said that fashion will be for France what the gold mines of Peru are for Spain. In the 18th century, Queen Marie Antoinette became the main royal fashion icon. Her place in history is cemented due to her extravagant wardrobe. She was rumored to have had 300 dresses made for her each year and she never wore anything twice. Clothes were brought back from Paris by travelers and local dressmakers replicated them. Additionally, fashionable women ordered clothing in the newest Parisian styles to use as models. With the advent of railroads and steamships, rich women began to visit Paris more frequently to purchase apparel and accessories. Napoleon III carried out a magnificent vision for both Paris and France, bringing about modernization and innovations that revived the French economy and turned Paris into a center of attention for all of Europe. Charles Frederick Worth, a dressmaker, rose to prominence during this time. Worth transformed the way dressmaking was previously viewed by turning the dressmaker into an artist of garnishment, a fashion designer. While some of his titled or rich clients commissioned him to make a one-of-a-kind creation for them, he is most remembered for compiling a collection of designs that were displayed on real people at the House of Worth. Customers chose a model, gave color and fabric requirements, and had a duplicate garment crafted in Worth's workshop. Basically, he laid the groundwork for today's haute couture industry. Next, I want to talk about Coco Chanel's unique take on fashion. Chanel revolutionized women's wear by replacing form-fitting corsets and lace frills with sailor shirts and white legged pants. Her design ethos was simple, nothing is more beautiful than freedom of the body. She made the little black dress iconic and accessible to all social classes. In her garments, she wanted women to be able to move and breathe as males could. In many respects, her work represented a type of female emancipation. Chanel's strong influence persisted long into the 1930s and American Vogue compared the widespread appeal of LBD Little Black Dress to the Ford Automobile meteoric rise to fame in 1926. A French visionary was responsible for the revival of the apparel sector after years of rationing and textile shortages during the World War II. Following the Second World War, Christian Dior established a new fashion era. The new look had an A-line skirt that reaches mid-calf, a waist cut, and is a new style that has been adapted to a feminine and beautiful silhouette. Dior's opulent clothing required intricate and pricey manufacture in the face of post-war shortages, which made it initially very contentious. The French designer firmly responded to detractors by saying, Europe has had enough bombs, now it wants to see fireworks. After the war, the House of Dior was swamped with orders, restoring Paris's standing as the undisputed global center of fashion. 
The new look became extremely popular and Dior gained several prominent clients from Hollywood, the United States and the European aristocracy. As a result, Paris, which had lost its status as the center of the fashion industry following World War II, regained it. The new look was hailed by fashionable women like Princess Margaret in the UK as a welcome respite from the austerity of wartime and defeminizing uniforms in Western Europe. Although French designers regularly dictate fashion choices, this does not mean that they do not value customer opinion. And that is one of the reasons French fashion is still in vogue. In 1966, the designer Yves Saint Laurent defined accepted high fashion rules by introducing a pret-à-porter, ready-to-wear line and extending French fashion into the mass production and marketing. He did this in response to the increased in demand for ready-to-wear clothing. Popular French fashion firms like Chanel have used incredibly innovative marketing strategies. They always make sure that the chief designer, the brand ambassador and of course the designs themselves communicate the company's tone. The fashion season comes to a conclusion with Paris Fashion Week. Fashion displays are staged in opulent locations like the Louvre, drawing the interest of shoppers everywhere. Secondly, traditional fashion houses have merged into conglomerates. For instance, LMVH is home to the brands of Christian Dior in Givenchy, a calculated move that only strengthens their position and cements their control over the world of fashion. Paris is still considered the world's fashion center, even in the 21st century. There is a long history behind this, it did not just happen on its own. The fact that fashion is an integral part of their tradition is the key factor in their success. French designers are responsible for a large number of enduring fashion items. Therefore, new designers will maintain their supremacy in the world of fashion as long as they maintain those aesthetics and design ethos while also making essential innovations in design and marketing. If you like the content, please don't forget to like and subscribe. Thank you.